we're going to pick a random product from Amazon and we're gonna model, texture and render it in Blender. I'm then going to show this product to the company that made it and I'll convince them to pay me to make the more cool footage that they can put on their website. If you want to learn more about the modeling techniques that you see me use in my videos, then check out my new ebook, the link is gonna be below. As always, we're going to need a couple of references to start with. On Amazon, that's really easy because we can just click on this image, right click, save image as. And now in my references folder, I'm going to generate a new folder called Blender. And this is where I'm going to save any references that I use for this particular project. Over here, I have a close up picture of the base. So we're going to save that as well. And the other pictures don't really show me anything I need, but I can see everything I need from these pictures. So we're going to be fine. Now in Blender, I'm going to go to my outliner and I'm going to replace that with an image editor. In the image editor window up here, I'm going to click open. And now I can load up the picture that I downloaded from Amazon. This way I can look at it as a modeling because I don't need my fucking outliner anyway. I'm going to start by first making the body of the blender because the glass is cooler and it's more fun so we're gonna save that for later. As you can see this is a pretty simple object so I'm going to add a circle with 8 vertices which we're then going to subdivide obviously. Maybe 12 vertices will do better because then we're gonna have enough geometry to create this hole for this button. We're going to lift this circle up a little bit and then in object mode we're going to duplicate it and pull it down. The lower circle we're going to scale up a little bit. Then I'm going to select this vertex in the front here and I'll press O to activate proportional editing. It might even be better to select a couple of vertices around here. And we're going to pull those down with our proportional editing to create this kind of shape. Then we're going to lift this up to bring it a little bit closer. We're going to join these two circles into the same object. Select them both, W bridge edge loops. And now we can maybe make this one a little bit bigger. We're going to add another loop cut over here, which we're going to scale down. And with subdivision surface, this is going to get us close to the shape that we're looking for here. So once we have this shape, we're going to create this little extra edge right underneath it. Then we're going to extrude this down and push it all the way to the bottom, scale this circle to zero on the Z axis. Then we're going to extrude this again, scale it down a little bit to create this rounded bottom. We can fill this and inset it a little bit. Something like this gives us the shape that we're looking for, but that's not too important anyway. We're going to add a loop cut up here and push it all the way up. And then we're going to pull it down on the Z axis. And now we can take this edge loop around here, extrude, right click and Alt S. And we're going to extrude that outwards a little bit. Then we're going to start beveling some of these edges to improve the shading. For example, I'm going to take these edge loops like this. And with Control B, I'm going to add a tiny bevel. You have to make sure that that bevel has a shape of one and two segments. This is going to make the edges look very sharp, but the shading is going to be absolutely perfect. We're going to do something similar up here, except with a slightly bigger bevel. And then we have to take this, extrude it inwards, extrude it inwards again, but only slightly. And then one more time and we can fill that. Now we're going to take this tiny segment and extrude it inwards. We can mark creases on this because we don't have to have a bevel. It's such a small corner. We're going to bevel this edge loop here. And now I think we're going to push this down a little bit further, scale it down a little bit and just adjust the shape so it looks a little bit cooler. We're going to bevel this edge loop once. Then we're going to select all of these faces, but we're going to deselect the horizontal edge loops. And now we can go to W, Loop Tools, Space. And we now have some extra geometry that we can use to create this circular hole in the front. We're going to select six faces like this and inset them a little bit. Make sure the edge rail is checked, go to Loop Tools, Circle. And you can adjust some settings for the circle, such as the rotation or the radius or whatever you got to do to make sure it's not all fucked up and twisted like this. With Alt S, we're going to push some geometry outwards to prevent all this weird twisting from happening. We're going to delete the faces on the inside and then adjust a couple more of the vertices just to make sure everything looks nice and smooth. Object shade smooth and with some subdivision, this hole is going to look pretty good. You can fill this with F and then press I and press O and that's going to add an extra little segment around this. You might want to uncheck edge rail because that's going to give you a perfect circle and you can then use that circle to make this little bevel around the button. Then we're going to extrude this outwards again. Go to W loop tools flatten and this is going to straighten this shit out in the front. And now we can scale this downwards, inset it a little bit, extrude it inwards to create this inner part. We're going to separate this to create this little gap. And we're going to bevel these edges to make this a bit sharper. Now I realize this button is way too fucking thick and have to push it inwards a little bit, but I have to be precise because I don't want to twist it in any way. So I'm going to press G and I'm going to click without moving the mouse. Then I'll set the orientation here to normal. And now I can move this in the direction of the average normal of the selected faces, which allows me to perfectly push it inwards and keep the same shape. Now let's duplicate this object in case we fuck something up. We're going to apply one level of subdivision surface. Now we're going to place our 3D cursor somewhere at the bottom here. Shift A, we're going to add a cylinder. 32 vertices is fine. This is obviously going to be one of the legs. So inset this a little bit and extrude it downwards and scale it up. Extrude it downwards one more time. And you can add some bevels here for the shading if you want to, but that's hardly going to be visible. So you don't have to worry much about that. Object shade auto smooth. I think this thing is a little bit too big, so we're going to scale it down a bit. Then we're going to place a 3D cursor in the middle of the object at the bottom. Select this thing in edit mode, select all its geometry. 
Press 7 to go to top view, Alt E, spin, use duplicates and set the number of steps to 4 and now we have 4 legs. These are still a bit too big so with individual origins we're going to select all the geometry and scale it down a little bit. We're also going to rotate this by 45 degrees around the 3D cursor here. And then we're going to parent this to the body and we're good to go. Now we can add some more subdivision surface to this shape and now let's make the glass container at the top of the fucking blender. So believe it or not, this is actually going to be quite simple. First, we're going to add a circle with eight vertices. We're going to scale that down so it fits inside this little circle here. Maybe we can be extra and make another little hole down here. Maybe we can bevel this and bevel its edges. And now we have a slot into which we can place this glass shit. Now we can extrude this downwards a little bit and scale it so it fits into that hole. Then we're going to extrude it upwards a little bit, scale it up a bit, extrude it upwards again. And at the top, this is obviously going to have to be a lot wider. Then we're just going to add a couple of loop cuts like this so we have squares on this surface. And now with subdivision surface, this is what it looks like. This whole thing should probably still be a bit thicker like this. Now we're going to apply one level of subdivision surface. And I'm going to take some faces like this, inset them with eye, check edge rail, then place the 3D cursor over here. And with the 3D cursor as a pivot point, we're going to scale these down towards the 3D cursor just to get this round edge up here. And we're going to try to do the same thing down at the bottom. Now we can select this surface, inset it a little bit, Alt S to push it inwards. And with subdivision surface, this is what it looks like. If you want to be extra cool, we can also bevel this a little bit. And now obviously we're going to need this on all sides of the blender. So we currently have 16 segments, which means one quarter is going to be four segments. So select one, two, three, four segments like this. Control I to invert the selection and delete all the other faces. Place the 3D cursor in the middle of the object. From top view, select everything in edit mode and use Alt E spin. Use duplicates, four steps, then select everything, merge by distance and correct the normals object shade smooth and you're good to go now we just have to make this handle here this kind of looks like a plastic shitty hollow handle it kind of feels like if i picked it up on a bad day it's gonna break and everything's gonna spill on the floor and obviously the solution to that would be to just throw it at the wall and forget about it we don't want this to happen so we're gonna make a thick glass handle i'm going to rotate this entire thing by 45 degrees so that when i go to side view on the side of the blender i have this empty area over here where i can attach the handle so now i can just place my cursor over here add a new cube scale it down a little bit then scale it up on the z-axis to make it long. I'm going to rotate this a little bit. I'll place my 3D cursor on this vertex. With my 3D cursor as a pivot point, I'll duplicate this one and scale it up a little bit. Then place a 3D cursor over here, select this, Alt E spin, uncheck use duplicates, and set the angle to 90 degrees, or in this case, we need minus 90 degrees. Four steps is fine. And we're going to do something similar down here at the bottom. So select this, Alt E spin, give me 90 degrees, and it looks like we're gonna have to move this up just a little bit like this. And now we just have to figure out a way to connect this. So over here, if we inset this surface and we delete this because we want to connect this, we're going to have eight edges. Over here, we have four. So we can just add some loop cuts like this. And now we turn this into eight edges as well, which means if we delete these little surfaces, we can join these two objects together, select these two edge loops, W bridge edge loops. And if you like this shape, you can keep it, but I'm going to scale this segment down a little bit. I'll place the 3D cursor between these two vertices. And that way, when I scale this down, everything is going to move towards that point and it's not going to become distorted. I'm going to lift this up a little bit and we're going to do the same shit down here at the bottom. So delete this surface, scale this towards the 3D cursor, W bridge edge loops, and now we have a nice solid handle for this blender. We're going to extrude this edge loop at the top, scale it down just slightly, then extrude it and bring it down to these little holes that we created. At this point, you're gonna have to extrude it and scale it inwards again so you avoid any collisions over here. And now you can just continue extruding this to the bottom. And at that point, we can start filling in the floor. We're going to add some extra segments over here to tighten this shit up a bit. It just looks pretty cool. I'm going to select these edges up here and set the mean crease to one, control E mark sharp, object shade auto smooth, and set the angle to 180. Now this is the shape that we're looking for. And the last thing that we need here is this lid up here. So we're going to duplicate this edge loop at the top and separate it to new object. Scale it down just a little bit, extrude it and push it downwards. Then extrude this one and push it outwards a little bit. Extrude, lift it up a little bit, extrude, scale it down a little bit. Extrude, push it up a little bit, scale it down a little bit, extrude, scale it down a little bit. Extrude, push it down a little bit, scale it down, extrude, scale it down, fill, fucking hell. Now we're gonna get rid of some of these mean creases object shade auto smooth and i think this looks pretty damn cute and now we're going to have to start adding some materials to these objects so first let's create some textures for the body of the blender go to the shading workspace add a new material go to material preview and set the base color to some dark gray type of shit i'm going to mark some seams around this shape that we created around the base here because that way in face select mode i can very easily select this entire segment i'm going to add a new material to that assign and that's going to be a dark gray or black material as well, but this one's going to have a much lower roughness. 
I'm going to select some edge segments around here, X dissolve edges. That's going to make it look a little bit sharper. The body has to be a little bit more rough, but then the button is going to have a slightly different material, which is also going to be a dark gray or almost black color. But the roughness is not going to be completely rough, but it's also not going to be very shiny. It's going to be something in between. Select a button and separate it to new object. I'm going to delete whatever this shit is, and I'll just replace that with an end goal. Then with Shift 7, I'm going to align my view with the surface of this button. I'll place the 3D cursor right here. Shift A, add a new plane, align that with my view. I'm going to apply the same material as we have on the body to these little feet down here. And the lid for the blender needs to have this shiny black material. So I just quickly renamed that the glossy black. I'll name this body material into matte black and there's also button. We should be fine like this. Now let's go back to paint net and design some of the labels that we have around this object. If you have windows, then go quickly download paint net. It's completely free. If you have Mac OS, you're fucked. I'm going to select my glossy black material and in the base color, I'm going to go to hex and I'll copy this code right here. Then in paint net, I'm going to paste that in this little box over here. And now I can use my bucket to create exactly this color. I don't need this to be very large, so I can probably just get away with something like 720 by 512. On the product, it says Pro Blend. So I'm going to take my text box, give me a white color, and set the font to whatever. We're gonna increase the font size a little bit, activate italics, and write Blender. I want this to be a little bit bigger like this. Maybe give me 55. And after that, we're going to increase the font again to like 72. Activate Bold and type in Pro. So our Blender is going to be called Blender Pro, like me. We should have probably done this on another layer, so I'll quickly just redo this. And we're going to need some kind of logo here. So what would be cooler than using the Blender logo? Go to Google and type in Blender logo. Go to Images. And we're going to take this white Blender logo. Right-click, Copy Image. In PaintNet, we're going to create a new canvas. Okay, control V. And with our box select tool, we're going to select this, control C, then go back to the other workspace, add a new layer and control V to paste this. And with shift, we're going to drag this downwards. We're going to place that somewhere around here. Tell me that's not the coolest fucking blender you've ever seen. I should make my own line of blenders as merch for my channel. Then back in Blender, we're going to copy the hex code of the matte black color, create a new canvas. And again, we're going to do 720 by 720. Paste that hex code. And now this is going to be the background color. Add a new layer, give me a white color, text tool, and instead of the company name, I'm going to write Aryans. We're also going to need some of this shit up here. I cannot tell what this is, but I would imagine it's something for crushing ice or whatever. So give me my shape tool, rounded rectangle, increase the brush size to something like five. We're going to create one of these and increase the corner size. Then we're going to create another one of the same size. And that new copy, we're going to rotate by like 45 degrees. I'm going to add some tiny lines to the ice cubes just to make them look a bit cooler. Our product is going to be way better than this company, so we're going to write ice, and that way it's going to be more obvious what this function is for. We're going to place that somewhere over here. Then in a new layer, we're going to create a large circle, which we're going to delete later, don't worry. And we're going to use this circle to help us figure out exactly where we have to make these little markings. So up here, we're going to need a zero. Over here, we're going to need a one. And with our brush tool, we're going to need to make three little dots over here. They have to be a little bit bigger and we're going to increase the hardness. So let's place one dot over here, another one over here, and another one over here. Now get rid of the circle. Control Shift F to flatten this, Control S, and we're going to save this into our Blender folder as icons. We're also going to flatten this other image, Control S, and we're gonna save that as logo. Now in Blender, we only have to UV unwrap this area around this button. So we're going to select this entire edge loop around here, Control E mark seam. Then we're also going to select these two faces in edge select mode. We're going to deselect this edge, Control E mark seam. And we don't really care about the UV map for anything else because this is the only areas which are going to have a visible texture. Then select everything, U unwrap. In the glossy black material, we're going to add a new image texture node. In that image texture node, we're going to load up the picture which we just saved. This one's going to be called logo. Plug that shit into base color. And now this texture is going to be visible on this object, but only in the backside because it's not mapped correctly. So go to UV editing, select everything and take all the UV maps and place them somewhere in the corner in the black area. Then only select these two faces, scale those up, rotate them, and we're going to place those on top of the logo like this. We might want to UV unwrap those again so that they have a better ratio. Rotate by 180 degrees. We can scale them a little bit to stretch them out on the z-axis a little bit. It looks like we're having some problems because we still have some subdivision surface active, so we can apply that and UV unwrap this again. And now that works perfectly. Then back in the shading workspace, in the matte black material, we're also going to add an image texture node. Open up the icons texture, plug that into base color. Go back to UV editing. In face select mode, select this surface inside here. U unwrap. We're going to have to rotate that by 90 degrees. 
and adjust this so that these icons are visible around the button. We can completely fuck up this UV map by just moving some of this inside here so we don't get this little white piece. It doesn't matter because it's only the visible render result that matters. With L in face select mode, we're going to select the surface again. With our brush select tool, we're going to deselect all of this shit. And now we can move only that part of the UV map a little bit. And that way we can adjust this little ice icon. And now everything is going to look a little bit better. The body of this object, just select that and place it somewhere in the black area. We're also going to select a little surface down here. And this is where we're going to place the company logo. So you unwrap, rotate by 90 degrees and place that over the company name. Now the textures are ready to go. Make sure that the UV maps of the feet are in a completely black area because we don't want any text on those. And now let's go ahead and make our glass material. So create a new material up here, crank the transmission and the principal node all the way up, set the roughness to something very low, like 0.05 or something. We're going to go to the world shading settings, add a new environment texture node, plug that into base color and open up an HDRI. If you don't have any HDRIs downloaded, then go to this website called HDRI Haven and you can download whatever environment texture you want. And this is going to light your scene properly. You probably want to use something like a little studio or some kind of a room during the day. The night sky obviously wouldn't make much for a product like this or a vendor like this but you gotta be smart and pick something suitable so now in the cycles render engine when we go to render preview we got some cool looking glass on this blender and the last thing that i want to do is fill this blender with a couple of fucking ice cubes so give me a new cube subdivide that twice and then we're going to duplicate that cube two or three times Place the 3D cursor in the middle of this cube, duplicate the vertex on the corner and snap it to the middle. Select that vertex, go to proportional editing, set that to random. Scale this down to beat up the cube a little bit. And we're going to do the same thing with the other cubes as well. This is just going to kind of randomize the shape a little bit. You can also use your smooth proportional editing to randomize this shape a little bit further by making it look a little bit more molten or something. We can make this a little bit smaller. And now we have a few variations of ice cubes which you can place around the blender. So add one or two levels of subdivision surface, object shade smooth for all of them. And then go to side view and just place those cubes inside the blender. Obviously they're gonna have to be a lot smaller. So you're gonna have to play a little bit of Tetris with these and scale them and rotate them. Then remove the lid and now you can look inside the blender and see what they look like. You can place them around the blender. Try to avoid any major collisions because that might give you some shading issues, but I don't think it's going to be a massive issue. You can add as many of these as you like. Just remember that this might take a big toll on your render time because all of these are going to be transparent and shiny and that's pretty difficult for Blender to process sometimes if you're rendering. Now in the render preview, you can see your ice cubes inside the Blender, but the ice cubes don't have a realistic material yet. So select one of the ice cubes, add a new material to the ice cube. Again, crank the transmission all the way up and set the roughness to something very low. And we're going to give this a slightly bluish color but the saturation has to be very low, something like 0.2. Select all the ice cubes, make sure you don't select the blender. Then deselect and reselect the ice cube which has the material. Press Ctrl L, link materials. Now anything you do to this ice cube material is also going to appear on the other ice cubes as well. So now in the render preview, you can see that these ice cubes have some kind of a glass material. If you really want to take this to another level, then you can just go on YouTube and search up how to make realistic ice cube textures or materials. You're going to get a lot of tutorials for that. I don't really care that much as long as it kind of looks like ice cubes, so I'm not going to spend any more time on this shit. But I do want my lighting to be a little bit better, so I'm going to add an area light somewhere up here like this. I'm going to scale that up. And I'll crank the power on that area light to something like 500 at least. I'm even going to increase the intensity of my environmental lighting a little bit. And now I'm going to add a plane right below this blender. We're going to scale that plane way up. Extrude the edge in the background and lift it up a little bit. Go to side view, add a camera if you don't have one. Control Alt Zero. And now just adjust the camera settings. For example, I want to zoom mine in a little bit like this. And now you can hit F12 and render your scene. Now we can make a bunch of cool animations of this product. We can do some close-up shots. We can do all kinds of shit with this. And then you can send this to the company that sells the product and tell them, hey, I can visualize your product like this. I made these for you. You can use these on your website. If you like this type of footage and you would like to work together, then let's have a conversation. And next thing you know, you're getting paid big money by big companies. But really, you're sitting on a beach in Croatia with your laptop and you're making this shit all day while you're smoking a cigar and drinking a martini. If you learned something from this video, then check out the fucking ebook. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comments what you want to see next and I'll see you in the next one.